All right, guys, this is going to be your second lecture, and in this we're going to be covering walls. Um, you're going to want to get kind of comfortable because I'm going to be covering several different fairly complicated things in the process of doing this. Um, so, and I'm also going to cover kind of some things that I just didn't want to point out in the last video. So um, we'll kind of cover those as I get to them, and it's things that kind of just make your life easier as you're working in Revit. So, you can follow along or you can just watch. A lot of this is going to be stuff you're going to want to get some muscle memory for, though. So, making sure I'm on the Architecture tab up here, I'm going to click on the Wall option, and it's going to default me to this generic 8-inch wall. And just so that we have something to test with, I'm going to put down one of these walls right here. Um, I'm then going to select it, and I'm going to do... Where's Array? I can... There it is. Yeah, Array... Um, and we're going to do, we'll do five of these, or six of these, I guess, just so that we have something to test with, and then we'll ungroup them. Okay, so I've got a couple walls there, and then just to make it easier to see what's also going on here, um, well, first let's change this to fine down here, so the settings, and then I'm going to do shaded, just so we can see some of that difference right there. Next, I'm going to go to view. Um, and I'm going to click on 3D section, and this is going to open up another window. So we've got these two tabs open here. If you go to tile views here, it's going to make it a lot easier to, uh, of course, it didn't do it the way I wanted, though. There we go. Okay. So um, now I have these series of walls right here, and then we can also see visually what's going on over here. These I'm going to change to consistent colors and also to fine, so that we can see what's going on with the actual changes that I'm making here. So, first wall we have right here on group. Okay. Um, so, first wall I have right here, you can see it's a generic 8 inch wall. I'm going to leave that first wall alone and we're going to go to this second one. So, if I change, very first step, I'm going to change this to 6 inch generic. Okay. And so, if you had a keen eye right there, you can see that this wall right here is now a little bit thinner than the one that I originally based it off of do that right there you can see it's a little bit thinner because it is now six inches and not eight inches like the original one was all right so as you select walls and then change them in this menu you can actually change uh, what wall that you're using or what walls there um, I know that a lot of students will go through and like kind of use just a generic wall um, to rough out a structure Oops. like this sort of uh, though and then once they're done they'll come back and they'll change each of these wall types to whatever specific one that they need um, kind of in this pattern right so you can do that quickly and easily um, I'm not a huge fan of that because sometimes you end up with weird alignment issues um, but to each their own I won't stop you guys if you want to do it so there's our generic six inch wall Did none of these ungroup none of them um, so, when you guys are building walls for this class, I only want you, if I have not reminded you in class yet, I only want you guys to be building um, wood stud walls. If you don't know what that is, that's sort of the generic uh, type of construction that you're going to see here in California. It's where we use um, 6 inch nominal exterior studs and 4 inch nominal interior studs to build most of the house with a couple exceptions. Um, and so as you're doing that, um, what I want you guys to do is get very used to actually modifying these. And part of the reason I want you guys to do this is because when you're going through and building things, the default ones in Revit are going to have metal studs here. I don't want you guys using metal, or I, I want you guys doing the wood studs because I know that every single time I go in and see a wood stud here, it means you've gone in and modified that wall yourself, which is what I want to see so that I know that you're using the tool and getting used to it. Um, so, what we're going to do first is we're going to create an interior wall, and then we're going to create an exterior wall. And I'm going to go through all the steps of those processes with you, show you some things to watch out for as you're doing it, and kind of cover the entire wall building process. Now, why am I covering just walls in such detail, you might ask? It's because ceilings and floors work basically identically, and then a lot of the color and material stuff we're going to do, be doing also applies to windows and doors as well. So everything I'm going to cover in this one lecture 
is going to apply to almost everything you're going to be doing as far as constructing a building for the next three weeks or so. Let me, four weeks actually, yeah. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to click on this wall right here. Again, it's just the generic eight inch. That doesn't matter. You can start with anything you want. It just depends on how much you want to fix uh, as you're going. So what I'm going to do is I'm, now that I'm in here, I'm going to click duplicate. This creates a new wall type that I can use as a reference. Um, whenever you're going in here, you have to create specific wall types. Um, and I'll get into kind of the pitfalls of certain things when you're doing materials later. But for now, um, we're just going to call this interior wall one so that we know what's going on here. OK, so I'm on interior wall one. And then I'm going to go to this very first button here that I pointed out earlier called that says edit. And it brings me into this. And so we've got a couple different things going on here. You can see that you may not have this preview option open to you. Yours probably looks like this. I like having the preview option open because um, it kind of just shows you, or it helps me check that I'm doing things right too. Um, then there's a couple different things that are fairly subtle but important about this menu right here. First, on the top, the exterior side. So as things move upwards, as you add more layers above this core boundary, that becomes the exterior. As you add stuff to the bottom, it's the interior from the core boundary, okay? Um, that's important because when you guys are building walls, uh, the I'll show you guys later, um, the actual wall face does matter in Revit. So make sure that you're building the, when you're, especially when you're building your exterior walls, that you build them on the, with the exterior side on the exterior side and the interior side on the interior side. Um, when you get to painting or having multiple different colors on your walls throughout the struct, throughout a single structure, um, you'll have to remember which side is exterior and which side is interior and plan ahead for that. So in order to build this generic interior wall that we're working with, um, I'm going to start with this. Right here we have structure for the function. So this is structural um, as far as Revit is concerned. We're not going to get into structure. We're just an interior architecture class. But um, the rest of these do matter. So for the material, I'm going to click on that. And it's kind of hard to see. If you don't have it clicked, um, you don't see it. But if you just click here, it, there's a little hidden like double or uh, three dot box right here. So if you click on it, it opens this menu. Um, and from here, I can type, um, what do they call them? It's not stud, it's joist. Um, so we're just going to reuse the joist layer. Um, and this is an interior wall, so we're going to use this one right here that doesn't have the bat insulation. So I'm going to click OK. And then we're going to set the thickness to 3.5 inches. Um, why 3.5 inches? Because we are, oops, 3.5 inches. OK. Um, we're using four inch nominal studs. Four inch nominal studs here in the US are three and a half inches thick um, because, and I had looked this up last year because someone asked, they start at four inches and when they dry, they shrink down to three and a half. And they're approximately three and a half, but they're usually pretty close to three and a half, give or take like a 32nd of an inch for the most part. Um, so that's why we say we're using three and a half inch, or when we say we're using four inch studs, we're talking about four inch nominal that are three and a half. So we're going to set that value to be accurate. So now that we have this layer, and again, make sure if, if it's structural, make sure it's checked in here. Uh, don't worry about variable, we'll discuss that later in the semester. So we're gonna hit insert right here and it's gonna insert another layer here. You cannot drag these up or around. You have to use the up and down buttons here. So I'm gonna click up and then I'm gonna click on the function again and I just, as the way I've gotten used to it, I just set left to right. So I started the function. This is a finish. This is going to be, if I click on the material here, gypsum wallboard. So I'm going to type gypsum, find the material, apply it, and then we're going to set it to half inch thick. Oops, half inch. And you can see as it updates, it draw, or we have the wood stud layer right here, and then now on the exterior side, we have that gypsum wallboard. Okay, we're going to do this one more time. I'm going to hit insert. I'm going to move this all the way down. We're going to do finish one. I'm going to change this to gypsum wallboard and half inch. Oh, nope, that was a weird number. Nope, even weirder. Okay. 
half inch. So now we have gypsum wallboard, gypsum wallboard with a wood stud layer in between. So um, if you guys recently finished hand drafting class, you may remember that they were um, one of the things that you may have been instructed to do was draw your walls at four or four and a half inches thick. This is why, is because when you get your half in, or four inch nominal stud and two sheets of half inch gypsum, your interior walls end up being four and a half inches thick. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply, and if I apply it to this material, you can see now that we have the high detail here, if I change this to coarse, you can't see it, but if I have this on fine, you can see physically that's that same representation that we got when we were in the uh, editing menu here with this right here. So that's why I kind of like having this on for this particular exercise. It's not super important later, but it's nice to have. So again, if we compare... Um, the thicknesses, um, this is a four and a half inch, it's going to be thinner that, than that six inch, and it's, oops, nope, don't do that, don't mad at me, um, and then it's going to be thinner than the eight inch there as well, right? So that's how we know that we've set this up. Um, sometimes just visually looking at something is the best way to identify that you may have messed something up or fat fingered a number. Um, I've seen all kinds of things, like uh, someone just did three foot. Well, if you have a three foot thickness right here, it's going to be that shape. So you know that that is not the correct size that you're going to be wanting to use for this. All right. Um, so I'm happy with that interior wall. Let's create an exterior. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to change it to the interior wall right here from the properties menu. So it's just a select a click and then I'm going to change it to the interior wall. I'm going to do edit type and I'm going to duplicate this one as well and we're going to call this exterior wall oops, wall one. So now this is going to be what I'm going to set as my exterior wall. So we need to make some changes to this one as well. Um, if I hit OK just real quick you can see currently there's no difference between these two because I really haven't made any functional changes to it. But if I go back in here and choose edit um, I'm going to create two new layers here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this uh, finish layer, the one that's first above the core boundary. I'm going to change the function of this to substrate, and I'm going to change this one to, uh, they don't call it plywood, do they? It's, oh, they do. Okay, yeah, sheathing. Okay, plywood sheathing. Um, and then we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this half inch because it's, easy, it's close enough. Um, I think it's good enough for most cases. Um, so we're going to call this half inch plywood sheathing. Again, because this is not within the core boundary, this cannot be structural. So you're not going to have a structural option. And then we'll get into the weeds on what wraps means later. So just I'm kind of pointing out things that we will cover later here in this same menu. Um, next, we're going to go to the function right here. We're going to change this to a membrane layer. The material is just going to be plastic sheathing. So this is whenever you see um, you see those buildings where they've like they built the they built the uh, studs. They put a bunch of sheetrock or a, a plywood sheathing up, and then they wrap the whole thing in plastic. Let me see if they actually have. I've never actually tried doing this. No, it's uh, that's rigid PVC. Um, yeah. Never actually considered doing this before. Yeah, they do have a vapor retarder. Air infiltration barrier. Ah, eh, let's not bother. Um, so you could do those. Technically, I, um, I don't care in particular for that. Um, membrane layer is just a membrane layer. Um, because it is a sheet of plastic, it's going to be zero inches thick. Um, it's effectively nothing in terms of things here. And then finally, we're going to set the exterior. And this is uh, going to be a custom material we make. So I'm going to set the finish to one. Um, we're going to do the thickness at half inch. Actually, let's do three quarter inch. And then I'm going to go into the material layer. And if we search for siding, we're not going to see any siding here. But Revit should have an entire material library for you guys to access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little ball right here. It's create and duplicate material. I want to create a new one because I don't have anything selected. I'm going to right click on default new material right here. 
I'm going to rename it to exterior siding one. Um, I'll get into very shortly why you want to be very careful about what you name things. Um, and then we're going to click on this right here, which opens and closes the asset browser. And you can see it's got a whole bunch of different materials here. Um, you may not have the same view. I, uh, I think it defaults to list view or something. Yeah. Um, I kind of like thumbnail view um, just to see what it looks like better because those thumbnails otherwise are kind of small. Um, and then I'm going to type siding and it's going to bring up, let's see, that's it. I would think there'd be more wood siding, shingle. That's weird. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. That's weird. Um, apparently you have to click on these. Um, so you guys should have access to these and you can see that there's a whole bunch of different types of siding here. Um, you've got, sh oh, cause I typed shingle, right? That's why. Okay. Um, so you've got a bunch of different sidings that you can use here. Um, you can choose a, kind of any of these. Uh, let's do like six inch clapboard for fun. So I'm going to click on this little arrow right here. And what you're going to see when I click on that is that this material right here is going to change. So click on it. This inherits those properties of that material. And then um, let's see if we can get this bigger. So you can see this is kind of like generic wood siding that you'd see kind of in a lot of places these days. Um, and I'm going to leave that as exterior siding one, apply. It should update this eventually. There we go. And uh, you can change the scene if you want. Um, I'm usually fairly happy with what's going on there. Um, you can do generic object. You can do um, drink fabric, which isn't really going to apply to this. So kind of choosing the right scene is going to <laughs> kind of help you choose what you're working with. So um, th because we're doing walls, this is probably a more appropriate one to use. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that this is now updated. It's a little darker if you saw that little flash right there. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Apply. And if you also had a keen eye, you saw that that just got a little bit thicker there. That one didn't. So when we had these two, we had this wall was our interior. We duplicated it and made modifications. So if I come over here now, and I'm going to change this to realistic, you can see that it's got that siding that we just set right there. Okay? So um, that's kind of the process uh, for the first couple weeks of how you guys are going to be building walls. The next thing you need to do, or the thing you need to watch out for in that process, is actually how you modify the finishes of those walls. So I'm going to take these last two walls right here, and I'm going to change these back to my, what did I call it, generic interior? Interior wall one. Mm. Okay, so I've got these set to interior wall one. And I'm going to take this one, and we're going to, so let's say interior wall one, uh, we're going to rename interior wall one. So I'm going to call this, uh, white slash white is it yeah so that lets me know as i'm working or as i'm looking through this menu interior wall one white slash white all right so if i duplicate this again let's say this one's going to be green on blue and even potentially you could do blue, blue one two three that just this helps me personally identify what type of wall i'm working with um, when I'm searching through that menu so that I don't spend a bunch of time searching through things, okay? So, what's going to happen? I guarantee you every single one of you is going to experience this at some point or another. So right now these two walls look diff or look identical because all I've done is duplicate them, but if you click on this one, you can see green-blue. If I click on this one, white-white. Now, if I go into here, green-blue, choose Edit, and then let's say I want to make the exterior side um, be, uh, let's say green, or well, what did I say? What's the order? Green, blue? Yeah, so we'll make the exterior side green on this. 
So I'm going to go in here. Um, in order to actually make the change visible, you actually kind of just have to get rid of this finish right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to do remove image. And then I'm going to change the color here, and we'll choose a nice, obnoxious green color. Um, so you can see that updated here, it's there. Um, if I go back to graphics, check use render appearance, that should cover all my bases. So I'm going to hit apply, OK. And now you can see that as I get out here, all of my walls on all sides of this have turned that obnoxious green, even the other wall here. So let me do an undo. And we'll go in here and I'll show you guys what happened. So when I took this gypsum wall material right here and changed the color, I didn't create a new one right here, right? So I so that would be like if I had um, the with the exterior siding right here and I changed the color on that, it's going to change it for all of them. So you need to be pretty diligent about not only creating new materials but naming them properly so that you can work with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do duplicate material and assets. And I'm going to call this uh, GWB green for gypsum wallboard green. All right. So hit enter. Again, I'm going to go into appearance. I'm going to do that, repeat that same process. So I'm going to remove that. We're going to pick a less obnoxious green this time because I'm actually going to keep this one. There we go. And then um, let's see graphics, use render appearance apply and OK. So it's changed a little bit there. We have GW green here. If I hit OK and apply, you can see that now just that one is green and none of the others have changed. So that's how you need to go through the process of actually changing your materials if you have more than one copy of something, right? So if I want to go into this one and change that, I can go to the GW green here, duplicate material and assets. And then this is going to be my blue. So then making sure I'm on blue, change the appearance. And then I'm going to change this to that blue right there. And then make sure that this hand doesn't have a multiple one on it. Um, I forget how to duplicate that. But if you end up having um, multiples, you run into this, a similar issue. So I'm going to hit apply making sure that just that one updates, hit OK, apply, and OK. And again, we still have green right there, blue right there, OK? So that's how you guys are going to want to go through and actually set up your colors when you're uh, creating walls, all right? Um, so the reason why I wanted to cover this so exhaustively, and I, we're 23 minutes now into this lecture, is because these, this whole process applies to the ceilings, right? So if I go to create a ceiling, this is the ceiling menu. You have the same edit, you have the same core boundary, you just have a below side instead of an exterior and interior, and you have the same options here for the ceiling itself. If we go into here and create a floor, you also end up with the same options for a floor, well, let's choose a floor that's actually got something. Um, so you can see here you have an actual floor that has different things going on. All right. Um, so you guys will be going in here. You will be adding new layers. You will be setting functions. You will be setting materials and thicknesses. It's all the same menu. It's just slightly different for, um, for the different for the wall for the walls, floors and ceilings. So I'm um, stuck in this. Uh, okay. So um, Make sure that you get very used to that process and then um, realize that you're going to be dealing with that a lot through working with Revit. So that's the first kind of lecture on walls. Um, the next lecture is going to be a little bit shorter and we're going to cover actual placement of walls. So I'm going to keep this up. I'm going to do that just in a separate video.